back, class. I am Mr. Betts, and this is Memestry, in which we go over an important historical topic using the internet's greatest resource, meme videos and funny clips. Today's topic, American Empire. By the mid-1800s, the U.S. had fulfilled its manifest destiny with the Gadsden Purchase. The contiguous U.S. from Atlantic to Pacific had been attained. But why stop there? <laughs> America was about to enter the age of imperialism, and let's start with Alaska and Russia. You can actually see Russia from land here in Alaska. Well, yeah, actually you used to be able to see Russia from Alaska because Russia owned it. They had since the 1730s. Russian Alaska was about twice the size of Texas, one-fifth the size of the U.S., with at most 500 colonists, mostly missionaries and sea otter hunters. But with a depleted sea otter population and the threat of Britain, who owned neighboring Canada, just taking Alaska, Tsar Alexander II started shopping the land around. They actually offered it to us at the beginning of the 1860s, but then the Civil War broke out and, you know, we were a little busy. A little after the war was over in 1867, Secretary of State William Seward was given the offer for Alaska at $7.2 million. That's only two cents per acre. Seward was all for it, but I don't know. Should we? Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! So we did purchase it, but the purchase did divide America. Some saw it as a great opportunity, others not so much. The land previously known as Siberia, Siberia, gained new nicknames such as Seward's Folly or the Polar Bear Garden. Polar bears be like. And at first, they were right. It was really hard to get any business going in the frozen tundra. That was until 1896 with the Klondike Gold Rush. Soon, thousands were flocking to the territory to get rich or freeze trying. And even knowing those original mines are now tapped out, it's a very good thing that we bought Alaska and eventually made it our 49th state a century later. What with all the fur and fish and lumber and gas and oil, and plus they have these really cute deer. <coughs> Nice, Ryan. I sneezed. Oh, I'm not allowed to see. Now, let's talk about Hawaii. From the land up north to the middle of the Pacific, by the mid-1800s, the archipelago that is Hawaii was one of the few nations not to be submerged by the wave of European imperialism. America, who was mostly about ensuring no European nation took over the islands, wanted it to stay free. It's actually said in 1851, Hawaiian King Kamehameha II asked Daniel Webster, Secretary of State, to annex the islands, in which he said, no power ought to take possession of the islands as a conquest or colonization. I guess irony can be pretty ironic sometimes. But the sugar and pineapple trade attracted a number of Americans. As they grew rich, they started meddling in politics, and it got really bad after 1890's McKinley Tariff, which raised import rates on foreign sugar. Soon they began conspiring. The tariff only applies because Hawaii is a foreign nation. What if it wasn't? Newly crowned queen Lilia Kolani was convinced that foreign interference was the root of all of Hawaii's economic problems, and she was right, but in 1893, a small group of planters staged a coup with the help of the American ministers and the U.S. Marines. The queen was forced to abdicate and was even charged with treason. Talk about insult to injury. You're in the bike lane. A new pro-American government was formed, led by self-appointed President Sanford Dole, cousin of James Dole of the Dole Food Company. Yes, the pineapple and banana guys totally stole Hawaii. Stop waving your banana in my face. I don't even want it. What? <laughs> 
Just kidding, I got it. Bloop. <laughs> to his credit, President Grover Cleveland was against all of this. He withdrew the annexation treaty and recommended that the queen be reinstated, but this all fell by the wayside after the Spanish-American War, and it was seen that Hawaii's geography made it the perfect spot to keep tabs on newly acquired territory like Philippines and Guam. So the opposition fell silent. This is library. <laughs> Hawaii would later become the 50th state in 1959. Now, I could talk about other territories like the Philippines or Guam or Puerto Rico or American Samoa, but let's talk about guano. Guano! That sounds so familiar. Yup, guano, AKA bird poop. In the mid-1800s, with the world going through a massive population boom, guano was worth its weight in gold. Bird poop, especially certain seabird poop, is really great fertilizer. It has nitrogen and phosphorus. It's soluble. You can do so much with it. But can you do this? And America wanted to get into the guano fertilizer game, but our birds, they just weren't cutting it. Ew, that's a little bit of a gross joke. Sorry about that one. So that's when then New York Governor William Seward proposed the Guano Islands Act, which basically said that if you discover any island, rock, or key out in the ocean and it doesn't lawfully fall under the jurisdiction of another country, you can claim it for the United States. But it has to have bird poop on it. An infestation of Canadian brown finches, which is a small bird. <laughs> I guess I should have seen that one coming, huh? <laughs> And there's about 10 of these bird poop islands that America still owns, the most famous of which being Midway Atoll. But don't expect them to become states anytime soon. They're considered insular areas, which means that they're lands held by the United States government without the possibility of ever becoming states. So you get nothing, you lose. Good day, sir! Regardless, who knows, maybe one day you'll be floating around in the ocean, you'll see a volcanic burp of an island, there'll be some bird duty on it, and you'll go down in history. Yeah, there's a slim chance, but stranger things have happened. Well, that's the meme three of the American empire. If you laughed or if you learned, give this video a like and make sure you tell me in the comments which topics or memes you'd like to see in a future video. I'd like to give a special shout out to my Patreon patrons. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a way that you can support Mr. Bet's class through monthly pledges of variable sizes, earning awesome perks along the way. For those of you that are always asking for downloadable audio tracks of the songs, like the one coming out next week, I always release downloadable tracks on Patreon, so check it out. And lastly, make sure you subscribe because I put out videos every single Thursday. It's a long school year, but we're gonna make it through together. Be safe, and I'll see you next time.